the Spaniards introduced the concept of Christianity to Filipinos. Eyes were opened as they were taught prayer, faith, and sacrifice. Christianity became a part of the way of life of the people. This knowledge of God paved the way for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be preached to the Philippines. As the world was in the midst of war, American servicemen were setting foot on the shores of the Philippines. Their arrival also signaled the start of the introduction of the church to the Filipinos. The first church meetings were held in the island of Leyte in 1944. Different groups held meetings, and over the course of three months, in January of 1945, members were able to organize a conference officiated by a Mormon chaplain. Air raid warnings did not stop the meetings. Discussions continued even in the dark. According to Maxine Grimm, she did not know of anyone being afraid, even in the face of danger. This is the story of a nation chosen by the hand of God to set the mark of Christianity in Asia. The story of a people who experienced hardships and triumphs in the face of wars and calamities, a celebration of God's goodness and love. General MacArthur and Philippine President Sergio Osmeña prepared to go ashore several hours after the first wave landed. They say war is hell. It is also exciting. It is adventurous, different and frightening in many more things. But one thing is certain. It changes lives. Coming from the mouth of one of the individuals instrumental in the spread of the gospel in the Philippines, Maxine Grimm saw how the war changed the lives of the people, physically and spiritually. The Korean War resulted in an increased presence of Latter-day Saint servicemen in the country. Clark Air Force Base became the home of these servicemen. On April 28, 1961, Elder Gordon B. Hinckley, together with a group of about 100 saints, offered a prayer in the hallowed grounds of the American War Cemetery and Memorial for missionary work to commence in the Philippine Islands. Amidst the rising sun and rows of grave markers, Elder Hinckley invoked the blessings of the Lord. We are not here to dedicate this land. This was dedicated for the preaching of the gospel on August 21, 1955, at Clark Field by President Joseph Fielding Smith. Rather, we are here to dedicate ourselves to the work and invoke the blessings of heaven upon the labors that will be performed here in the future. We thank thee for this Republic of the Philippines in which we now meet and for the great price which has been paid by many to bring freedom of conscience, freedom of worship, and freedom of assembly here to this land. We invoke thy blessing, Father dear, upon the missionaries who shall come here, that thy spirit may touch their hearts, that their lives will be clean and virtuous, that their examples may be marvelous before the people. Give them joy and courage and faith and satisfaction in their labors and make them fruitful. We invoke thy blessing upon the people of this land that they shall be friendly and hospitable and kind and gracious to those who shall come here and that many, yea, Lord, we pray that there shall be many thousands who shall receive this message and be blessed thereby. We pray, Father, for thy people here who shall join the church, and for thy people everywhere, that they shall live together in the bonds of fellowship and love and peace, in one great brotherhood, which comes with the knowledge and assurance that all are sons and daughters of thine, and that Jesus Christ is our elder brother. As Elder Hinckley's prayer slowly became fulfilled, missions were created in the Philippine Islands, to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people. The first mission, the Manila Philippines Mission, 
was created on June 28, 1967. Over the course of 50 years, the country now has 17 missions. The faith and diligence of the people to the gospel resulted to the building of two temples and the announcement of a third one in the northern part of the country. The Manila Philippines Temple was dedicated on September 25, 1984. Thousands of saints have entered the doors of the house of the Lord to make higher covenants, be sealed with their families, and perform ordinances for their ancestors. The Cebu City Philippines Temple was dedicated 26 years after, on June 13, 2010. This temple serves the members of the church in the southern part of the country, set amidst the busy street of Gorordo in Cebu City. The temple stands as a beacon of peace and hope for the people in the south. The spectacular growth of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints during its first 50 years in the Philippines has resulted to individuals, families, and even communities being blessed as they embrace and live by the teachings of the Savior. It is anticipated that as more and more Filipinos open their hearts to the gospel, countless lives will be changed. Innumerable souls in the country's islands will be edified and strengthened.